Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I am quite happy to be, to be here with you today. I'm Julie Pariset, and I am the Innovation and CSR Director of the Alliance for European Flax Linen and Hemp. Also, Marie de Mag uh, and Gilles Poulens uh, are here with me today. Marie de Mag is a Sustainability Director at the Alliance, and Gilles Coulen is an uh, expert of our Scientific Europe and Scientific Council. I have one sentence to tell you today since we start the show this morning. European Flex Linen and Hemp takes a global step forward into the composite sector. It was obvious since we start this morning and it was so crowded here at the Natural Fiber Village that I invite you to discover in all five. This natural fiber combines both functional and environmental properties that brings value to products. During the conference, we will highlight the recent development of flax linen and hemp as advanced natural material for the composite industry. Those solutions meet technical requirements for performance, and also they answer industrial and end-user expectation for a durable composite future. All the sector must face some challenges, climate emergency, regulation, societal expectation. Everyone is concerned now. The composite industry needs robust environmental data to calculate the impact of their components and finished products. We will give you during this conference an update on the Euro European flax linen environmental trajectory, focusing on rayable data. Now let's start uh, with a few words on the Alliance organization. The Alliance for European Flax Linen and Hemp is the only agro-industrial organization that brings together all the steps, all the players in the European flax linen industry. It counts 10,000 companies in 16 countries, from fields to weaving. We have an ambition. We are working towards a common goal, making flax linen and hemp the preferred premium fiber worldwide, and this based on scientific, verified, economic, sustainability data that creates high design at the end a set of decision-making tools for you industrials. Our mission are based on informing, supporting, promoting European value chain players in an international context. Western Europe is the world leader in flex fiber. Three countries, France, Belgium, Netherlands, produce three quarters of the world productions. It makes 240,000 tons of fiber, long and short. As for hemp fiber, Europe is the second producer worldwide. Let's talk now about traceability. Traceability of supply chains has become the stone to be more durable and to demonstrate best practices. The flax linen industry can rely on a key certification, which calls a European flax. European flax is the guarantee for premium flax fiber grown in Western Europe for all markets. This certification has experienced a strong growth over the past four years and is definitely now become the B2B passport for both traceability and story proving. For over more than 15 years, we've been, pro pro we've been, sorry, we've been working to prove and market the environment, environmental and functional properties of our fiber and product. By producing references tool in open source, it gives the knowledge to all players from the value chains. The support of our European Scientific Council, an ecosystem of experts based on an open innovation approach, enables to deliver publication, technical reports, documents of standardization, environmental data, all the tools 
that helps at the end to understand flex and M fiber behavior and help to position both fiber solution on the composite shelves of the uh, industry. I am now happy to leave the stage to Gilles Coulen, expert of our European Scientific Council. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Julie. And um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is indeed Gilles Kohler from um, the Alliance, the Scientific Committee. Uh, and I'm very happy to uh, show you today uh, some, if you can hear me well, um, some a selection of uh, preforms and a recent uh, developments uh, of flex and hemp fibers. Uh, so the things I show you here is only a selection. You can find many more examples in a natural fiber village, which is uh, very close by. So let's start uh, with the flex and hemp fiber preforms. So there is a wide variety of uh, preforms uh, available. You have the woven fabrics of Flexco, you have uh, non-wovens and UD from Equitechnila, uh, non-crimps and uh, many more. And many of these uh, preforms also have um, a pre-impregnated uh, alternative or a version. So you can definitely ask uh, the companies more about that. Um, so another very interesting product are the grid structures. For example, these of Bcomp uh, and Texin of Tech. So it's a very clever solution to enhance the bending uh, performance uh, of composite products. So in short, uh, so for many or for practically all uh, glass and carb carbon fiber reinforcements that are on the market today, there is also a sustainable uh, flex fiber alternative. And a question that I also hear quite often is uh, about how to control the quality of these products. But all the, the companies that are shown here on the slide are really experts in uh, selecting and blending uh, flex fibers to also have a consistent quality uh, over time. So a uh, first uh, product that I want to highlight uh, are the rovings, which is a key product uh, within the Alliance. Um, and for natural fibers, it's a particular material. So these are discontinuous fibers in comparison with continuous carbon and uh, glass fibers. So here it is very important to have a good overlay uh, method and a good stabilization uh, technology. And that uh, differs from, uh, from different uh, manufacturers. Like for example, the rovings of the Pestle uses the Yprec technology. And then by changing the amount of, uh, of powder binder and the powder uh, material and the type of powder material, they can create uh, a flat roving, which can be impregnated afterwards or a pre preg roving. And then the, the product from Terre de Lain is also very interesting. There they want to keep the fibers uh, straight and then they wrap around uh, a cotton uh, yarn uh, to stabilize uh, the material. And then next uh, are uh, the product of Safila, and they use a uh, very little twist uh, to in incre increase the friction uh, in the yarn and uh, thereby um, stabilizing the material. So all these products have uh, low or um, yeah, no or very little uh, crimp, of oh, sorry, twist, um, which makes it a very interesting uh, material uh, for the composite industry. Um, so there are also uh, colored uh, flex solutions. So it is quite easy uh, to dye uh, flex fibers. And this is also something that we inherited from uh, the long traditional in uh, fashion and in design. Uh, so for example, it's possible to dye uh, the roving like uh, Der de Lain did, for example. Um, and then there's also uh, the company uh, Libico, which is a Belgian uh, weaving company, who has a long tradition in, uh, in um, flex fiber uh, weaving. Uh, they were here from the early beginning uh, active in the composite market and then recently uh, they um, renewed uh, their um, portfolio for the composite sector and one of their products is also a dyed uh, woven fabric. Um, next, uh, these are the products from um, uh, Culture In, the, the Variant, and um, this is really much of yeah, especially designed for the design industry, going from interior design to automotive to also luxury uh, products. There, yeah, you can, yeah, for example, dye the, the rovings or you just use a natural material. And then they use a special a composite yarn. So it is a, a coated um, flex fiber yarn where they then can produce um, rigid or semi-rigid um, products or panels but you can definitely see more of that uh, in the natural fiber village. Um, 
Next is uh, Texinov. So there's a warp knitting company, and they're also continuously expanding uh, their product portfolio for uh, the composite industry. Uh, so they have uh, three main uh, categories that they are working on. So first is um, a mesh uh, structure, and there what's really interesting about it is that it has very good uh, drapeability, so it is very easy to make uh, complex uh, shapes. Uh, then they have a space of fabric, which is actually a combination of uh, flex fibers and uh, polypropylene uh, filaments, uh, which can then be used as um, yeah, an impact resilient or a resilient and impact absorbing uh, core material. And then next is the grid structures, which I briefly introduced already. And this is uh, to, yeah, mainly to increase the, the bending stiffness or the bending performance of your um, uh, composite uh, products. So um, I have also the, um, the pleasure to show you some um, recent uh, applications of flex and hemp fiber composites. So again, there are many more uh, applications uh, going on in the past year, and I invite you again to the Natural Fiber Village where you can uh, explore more of these uh, products. So um, a first uh, application which is very exciting is the Volvo EX30 from um, uh, where Bcomp uh, was a collaborating uh, partner. And there, uh, Bcomp Amplitex uh, materials are used um, in the dashboard or in the, um, and in the door trim panel. So there actually the drivers can choose in a four uh, interior design, so-called uh, rooms, and two of them uh, use the aesthetics uh, of um, Bcom Amplitex uh, as a solution. So I think this is also very interesting where um, technical performance, sustainability, and design uh, really come uh, together. Um, so Bcomp and Volvo has been, have been collaborating uh, for many years. So it was also no surprise uh, that they have been collaborating on this uh, particular uh, product. Um, so Volvo designed the EX30 to have uh, the lowest carbon uh, footprint of any uh, model in the Volvo's uh, car's history. Um, and what is also very encouraging is that um, sustainable flex fiber composites are now entering uh, the serial automotive uh, production. And the sector is working very hard to uh, continue this trend. Um, another example is um, still in the, in the automotive sector, but more a niche application, namely in the um, expedition uh, vehicles or campers. And um, this is the Sherpa by, uh, by Greenlander and is um, developed by a very interesting uh, partnership. So here, uh, Greenboats uh, was the main development partner. And as the name suggests, uh, they have a lot of experience in the marine sector, but uh, also over the past years, they have uh, many other application developments as well, ranging from uh, aerospace to other applications. And uh, if you can, uh, can build a resilient uh, flex fiber composite for a marine environment, then I'm also very sure that they can, uh, can do the same for other outdoor applications like uh, this expedition uh, vehicle. Uh, so there, the other partner, the Pestle, um, delivered uh, the Rovings, the Lincor uh, product. So that was also shown in one of the previous slides. And then, uh, and then Fasmer is uh, the production uh, partner. And then together in this collaboration, they industrialized uh, the skin production, where they have uh, yeah, 32 meters long um, skin production street, where they can uh, uh, produce uh, very big uh, skin panels of six meters in length and two and a half meters uh, width, also at a high production capacity of 300,000 square meters uh, per year. So uh, with this um, product, so uh, with the flex fiber reinforced uh, skin, they uh, achieve a higher uh, stiffness uh, compared to the glass fiber uh, skin having the same uh, weight. And again, you can also um, lower the CO2 footprint uh, of your uh, material. So I hope that I was already able to show you that um, flex fibers are more than only a sustainable design product. So they have also, they're also an engineering material with uh, very good uh, properties. So uh, if you then look to, your to the table in the lower left uh, corner, there you can uh, see that uh, the properties are of carbon fiber. There we have to be honest that they are still a bit out of reach, but you also have to keep in mind uh, that um, carbon fibers are quite energy intensive uh, to produce. 
And there are other engineering ways uh, to try to compete still with carbon fiber. And then I'm refer referring, for example, to the B-Comp uh, power ribs, where they use uh, a smart design to increase the performance of your composite and thereby still uh, compete with uh, carbon fibers. So um, then comparing with, uh, with glass fibers, we can see that flex fibers have a similar stiffness and somewhat uh, lower strength. But what is very important is that uh, flex fibers are a lot lighter than glass fibers. And then actually in many uh, composite applications and practically all composite applications, light weighting is uh, very important. And here is uh, where flex fibers can, uh, can have a big advantage. So if we take an, uh, an example, if we have a plate-like uh, material and we load it in bending, and if we want to design it to limit uh, the deflection to a certain point, uh, for example, uh, as we saw on the previous slide, uh, the, the sandwich uh, structure uh, in the expedition uh, vehicle, then in this type of application, if you want to minimize weight, we have to maximize the specific bending, uh, the, the specific bending stiffness um, of your material. And then we can uh, compare the green line of uh, flex fiber composites with the bluish line of glass fiber composites. And then we key, can see for a fiber volume fraction of 50%, we have a 50% higher specific bending stiffness for flex fiber composites compared to glass fiber composites. So yes, it is definitely possible to have also uh, a technical advantage using uh, flex fibers. And that's particularly in these type of applications. Oh, sorry, I have to have to speed up. Um, so quickly in, in this slide, um, yeah, sport and, and leisure is a, is a very interesting application uh, for uh, flex fibers. Here also uh, a weight reduction and reduction in footprint are achieved. Um, and then for vibration damping. So this is one of the main topics why it is so interesting to use flex and hemp fibers in uh, sport, uh, sport articles. Um, so here, flex fibers has actually the best of, best of two worlds. So as I told, there are great materials for light weighting as they have good uh, stiffness, but at the same time, they have also very good damping performance. So it is actually the damping capacity is two to three times higher compared to, uh, to carbon and, uh, and uh, glass fibers. And this is also uh, why athletes or recreational sporters have a different experience while using products containing uh, flex and hemp fibers. So for example, better on snow feeling like we saw here, um, but also in, in tennis and in other sports, there is a great benefit of using um, flex fibers. Um, this slide I'm going to skip, unfortunately, but is um, also an application in sport articles. Um, and yeah, there's also a general thing that we wanted to show in uh, this uh, presentation. So if you probably noticed, of course, uh, the Olympic and Paralympic Games are a great, are a, a big topic in uh, this year's uh, Jack. And we want to show that the flex fiber composites are used in many different uh, sport articles. And uh, in these products, you can uh, reduce weight. You can have more uh, athlete benefits and then joy playing since you have a good damping performance of your material. And of course, you can reduce, or yeah, you can improve uh, the sustainability uh, of your product. And with this, I want to give the word to uh, Marie de Maagd, who is a sustainability director within the Alliance. And we'll uh, talk a bit more about the environmental trajectory of European uh, flax and linen. Thank you. Thank you, Gilles. Um, Indeed, uh, sustainability is one of the key drivers to uh, use flax and linen fibers. So I'm happy to share the Alliance's commitments to make sure that the flax and linen sector is up to the data challenge. As a warrant of uh, any data about uh, European flax linen, the Alliance ensures that life cycle data are scientifically robust and also representative of our specificities and our geography. In order to highlight the excellent sustainability profile of European flax due to low input farming practices 
and of course, to enhance the environmental footprint of your own products while we meet consumer expectations and upcoming regulations. The first challenge is the fiber data. That's the foundation brick. It's a collective data on the scope of our European flux certification. It's built thanks to the expertise of our ecosystem, including the reference agronomic institutes, Arvelis and Inagro. So we publish the data, but even more important, we make sure that they are available to LCA tools users. We do collaborate and co-construct with databases. So now we are very happy to say that European Flux long fiber data are present in the three key databases. One is HIG, which is relevant mostly for apparel. There's the environmental footprint database by the European Commission, which is becoming a reference because more and more sectors are getting involved with the PEF, like PEF Apparel or PEF Ski, very new. And the most recent is EcoInvent, as we have just entered the database, a leader in November. And what about flax short fiber? They are also present in the EcoInvent database. I will not here make any comparisons with other fibers because it is the responsibility of the manufacturer at the end to make the comparisons of finished products. Our responsibility is to provide data you can use and data you can trust. The second challenge is to map and to measure all the transformation processes. And guess what? Until the spinning stage, they are mostly specific to flux and linen. So you cannot just copy and paste proxy data from other sectors. So the Alliance engages each industry player to collect and to produce data on a collective level on a European scope. That's a great example of pre-competitive collaboration we are now in the external review uh, process, so we can expect the data to be released during the second semester 2024. So stay tuned for information, links to the data, and updates on the release of the new data sets. Then the third challenge is to support each industry player into managing their own environmental data, into uh, measuring its footprint, to provide a more specific answer to the demands of their clients, meaning more granular data, also to enhance their sustainability initiatives, to test some eco-design scenarii, and of course, to monitor progress over time in very short, to industrialize the impact data calculation and to drive continuous improvement. Doing all this helps to get prepared for the regulation. As I'm sure you're aware, there's a whole bunch of regulation coming into force in the next few years, and uh, including several in the European Union. These regulations are directly impacting the way you can communicate about your products and the claims that you will be allowed to make. Two are very strictly banning greenwashing and specifying under which specific proof uh, you will be required to substantiate any claims on the products. There's of course the PEF category rules to precise the calculation method so that you can get robust, reproductible, and comparative assertions. And there's the whole ESPR regulation that is setting eco-design requirements 
and establishing a digital product passport for any product that will be entering the EU market. In order to get ready for this, you can rely on the flux linen sector and all the value chain players to play their part and make it happen. We'll be very happy to take any questions in the meetup area, which is just on the right hand side over there. And of course, please come and meet us and uh, the natural fiber exhibitors in the natural fiber village in the whole five ALC, so this way, straight ahead. Thank you very much.